Today we are starting a unit of nuclear chemistry, the study of changes in the nucleus. Up until now, all chemical reactions that we discussed involved rearrangement of atoms into the new compounds, the shuffle of electrons, but nothing was really happening to the nucleus. Now that we are starting the nuclear chemistry, it's a small branch of the entire subject of chemistry, we will be talking about some changes that can be happening to a nucleus. Okay, by now you should know that nucleus is made out of protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged and neutrons have no charge. Protons being positively charged, they repel each other. However, they are held together in the nucleus by a strong binding force. A bunch of neutrons provide some sort of stability. They kind of a buffer between all these positive charges. But still, positively charged protons really repel each other quite strongly. It's a delicate balance between the binding force of the nucleus and the repelling force of the protons and the buffering ability of the neutrons that keep it all together. When this balance is not working out quite well, the nucleus can become unstable. It can start to fall apart. We call this process a nuclear decay. And we start with the alpha decay, when nucleus chips away an alpha particle, two protons and two neutrons. Over here we have a, a nucleus that has plenty of protons and neutrons in it. It has too much energy for its own good. In fact, it has so much energy that it starts to fall apart, to release some of it. So alpha particle is released, and we have the remaining nucleus. Because some energy was released in the process of releasing alpha particle, this newly formed nucleus is more stable. It is lighter, four atomic mass units lighter, and has two less protons, so it is no longer the same element it used to be before it started to decay. But still, it's more stable. Let's look at this atom of uranium-238. It contains 92 protons and a considerable amount of, of neutrons, to be exact, 146. Okay, it is unstable. It has too much energy for its own good. It really will try to get to the more stable version of itself. And one of the ways to do it is chip away alpha particle and release some energy in the process. So, alpha particle released, two protons and two neutrons go away in the form of alpha particle. And the remaining nucleus is no longer uranium, because it has two less protons. We know that the protons are sort of an ID card of the element. Now we have an element with 90 protons in it. So it's no longer uranium, it is thorium. It is thorium-234 because four atomic mass units disappeared in the form of alpha particle that went away. Okay, let's write a nuclear reaction for this process. I, I will be using isotope notation. Okay, here's the symbol of uranium and 92 atomic number of uranium at the bottom. It's a number of protons in the nucleus of uranium. 238 is the mass number of uranium, the sum of all its protons and neutrons together. Now, this nucleus is in unstable, so it decays and produces alpha particle. We will use the Greek symbol alpha, and at the bottom of it, we will put number two, because it contains two protons. So, and at the top, we are putting number four, because it is the mass number of the alpha particle. Two protons and two neutrons are way together, four atomic mass units. Okay, what is left behind? Something with two less protons, so 90 protons at the bottom, and the mass number of that something that is left behind is four atomic mass units less, so we're putting 234 at the top. The moment we know the atomic number of an element, we know what element it is. Number 90 tells us this, this element is thorium. Alpha particle might be represented with the Greek letter alpha, but even more frequently it is uh, represented with the symbol of helium, like this. It is because if you think about it, helium, when we look at the nucleus of the helium itself, it has exactly two protons and two neutrons. So 
the alpha particle looks exactly like a nucleus of helium. A quick way to check if your uh, nuclear reaction is written correctly. We have 92 as atomic number on the left, and if we dump those two numbers at the bottom, that will be 92. And we have a mass number 238 on the left, and if we dump those two numbers over here at the top, we will end up with 238. No matter how you decide to write your alpha particle with the Greek letter or with the symbol of helium, it always supposed to have two as its atomic number and four as its mass number. Pause this video and try to write to finish these nuclear reactions on your own. Okay, here's my take on it. So I need to less protons in this number, 86, and four atomic mass units less in this number on top. So we're talking 218. I look up element 86 in the periodic table, and it is a radon. Now, this francium decays into something with 85 protons in it, and 200 and seven atomic mass units. Element number 85 is astatine according to my periodic table. Okay, and the last one, gold, will decay into alpha particle and an element with 77 protons, it is iridium. And the mass number of this particular isotope will be 181. The moment we know the atomic number of the newly formed nucleus, we know what kind of element it is. And the mass number of newly formed nucleus will be four atomic mass units smaller than the mass number of the original decaying nucleus. The alpha decay is when an unstable nucleus chips away an alpha particle two protons and two neutrons, and releases some energy in the process. The beta decay, it is when nucleus, to become more stable, gives away a beta particle, or electron. Mass of an electron is negligible, so we will put zero for a mass number, and the charge of electron is negative one. Since there are no protons inside of the electron, we will put the charge in the place of the atomic number. Now, let's write down this nuclear reaction. Here we have lithium-8. Lithium has three protons in the nucleus, and 8 is the mass number, the sum of protons and neutrons in it. It is unstable. It releases an electron, the beta particle, and what is formed at the end. It should be something with the one extra proton in the nucleus and the same mass. So that would be atom of beryllium. Quick check if our reaction is written correctly. These bottom numbers should add up to the number at the bottom on the left. Minus 1 plus 4, beautiful 3. And those numbers at the top should add up to the same number as we see at the top over here. Definitely correctly written reaction. Look at what happened. After, released, uh, after nucleus released an electron, we got ourselves an extra proton in this nucleus. So this new nucleus is no, no longer lithium, because lithium is supposed to have three protons. This new nucleus is a nucleus of beryllium. But this is strange, isn't it? We've talked so much about nucleus being made out of protons and neutrons, and suddenly, out of the blue, it starts to release electrons. How is that possible? Here comes an explanation of that weird phenomenon. The subatomic particles have decay of their own, and a neutron, under certain circumstances, can decay into proton and electron. 
Let's see how it happens. Here is my neutron. The mass number is 1 and no charge to speak of, so 0 goes at the bottom. Okay, it decays to form a proton. A proton would have an atomic number 1 and a mass, mass number 1 and electron released in the process. This electron is released. This is what comes out of the nucleus, while this proton that just been formed out of the neutron is left behind and increases the atomic number of the newly formed nucleus. Along this entire process, energy is released, and as a result, the newly formed nucleus is more stable and has the higher atomic number as a result of it. One extra proton in the nucleus. This is a commonly accepted uh, symbol of uh, beta particle, but you also can represent it with the Greek letter beta, like this. Whenever you represent beta particle, whether you decide to use the Greek letter or symbol E for electron, the mass should be zero and the charge should be written at the bottom as a negative one. Okay, pause the video and uh, finish up these nuclear reactions. They are all examples of the beta decay, so expect the atomic number to rise by one and mass to remain the same. Now here is my take on it. So we're talking about seven. Seven protons means that we're talking about nitrogen and mass is not going to change. Over here, the newly formed element will be number 54, which is xenon, and mass is not going to change. And over here, we're talking about element number 91, this protactinium, the mass number remains the same. Okay, can you figure out what is missing? What kind of particles was released in this nuclear decay? We can see that the atomic number went up from 82 to 83 and nothing happened to mass. Mass remained the same. It means that it's an example of beta decay. Electron has been released. Now, over here we see that the atomic number decreased by 2. 86 became 84 and we see 4 units of mass disappear. Where they disappeared, they disappeared into alpha particle that was released in this uh, nuclear decay. And here is last example. We can clearly see that it's a beta decay and polonium formed at the end of it. But what was decaying? Well, we know that this bottom number should adapt, should adapt to the atomic number of this element on the left. So it's supposed to be 83. 83 elements is a bismuth. And the mass is going of this particular isotope of bismuth would be 210.